OK, so the standard normal distribution is a bell curve, OK, where the mean dead center is zero, and we have a standard deviation of one. So we say that Z is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of one, or a standard deviation of one with a variance of one squared, okay? However you prefer to write it, okay? So um, it has two points of inflection. So here you've got the curve is coming around, it's going clockwise, and then there must be a point where it goes to anti-clockwise. Likewise, coming around here, it's going anti-clockwise, and then it becomes clockwise. So there must be two points where there is that turning, okay? So this is the equation of the standard normal curve. Now, you may not have come across it, okay, um, when studying the normal distribution as part of this course, because we don't really do much with the equation. The whole point of dealing with um, uh, the normal distribution is to find the area under the curve, and then we integrate it. But algebraically, we don't integrate this, okay? We, we do it numerically. Uh, because you, it's very difficult to integrate this. Um, it doesn't have an algebraic integral that we can utilise. Okay, we can't do it. So um, you may not you may not have seen this equation before, but this is the equation for this standard normal distribution curve. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we are going to try and find the points of inflection for this curve. So we're going to differentiate it. Okay. So what do we need to be aware of? Well, we need to be aware that the 1 over root 2 pi is just a number. Okay. So don't think of it for anything else. To differentiate e to the minus a half x squared, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of what's up here will come down to the front. So we'll have minus x. So we'll have minus x. Uh, let's put it as 1 over root 2 pi x e to the minus a half x squared. OK? So now we've got to differentiate that again. OK? We've got to find the second derivative. So for that, we're going to have to use the product rule. So I'm going to treat this bit as the first section, and that as the second. OK, so the first function and the second function. So we've got the first times the derivative of the second. So using the chain rule again, we're going to multiply that by minus x, because we've got the derivative of this is going to be just minus x, because the minus a half of 2x. So minus x e to the minus a half x squared. OK. And then we've got the second times the derivative of the first. Now the derivative of the first is just the minus 1 over root 2 pi. So e to the minus a half x squared. So let's tidy this up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, think about factorising this. Well, let, let's tidy it up first. That's probably a better idea. So we've got the two minuses make a positive. We've got x squared there. So we've got 1 over root 2 pi x squared e to the minus a half x squared. Um, take away 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared. So if I factor out the 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared of a bracket, and then I'm going to have x squared minus 1, then the second derivative is going to be 0, which 
when this is zero. Now the one over root two pi is just a number. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that. E to the minus a half x squared can never be zero. There is no value of x that will make it zero. So the only solutions will come from this bracket being zero. So that means that x is plus or minus one. So in actual fact, these turning points are happening at one and minus one. Now, we could substitute in to find the y coordinates if we wanted to. Okay, so we've got minus 1 and 1. Now, if we substitute in minus 1 into this, we're going to get 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half. And we're going to get exactly the same when we substitute in 1. Which is probably what we expect because we expect the, the graph is symmetric. And so those two points must be the same height. So it's clear then that the, turn, the uh, points of inflection of the standard normal distribution appear at minus 1 and 1. So the consequence of that is that minus 1 and 1 is one standard deviation away from the mean. OK, so we'll see if this continues when we look at the normal distribution. So not the standard normal, the normal distribution where we have a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma in the next video.